Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for this episode 20 of the 200 horsepower challenge here on Calmlands with me, Farmer Murphy. Well, it's the following day or the next month. Uh, as you can see, we're getting a bit of a later start than we did last episode. Uh, that does not mean that I slept in. I've been up and busy working uh, since early this morning and... Uh, you can see our money has gone up significantly. That's because one of the jobs I did is I sold all of the silage in the uh, fermenting silo except for what was required to fill up here our forage production. And actually, if we take a look in our uh, production menu, so you can see it's, well, if you look down here first, total mixed ration were 168,000. So I had run it and processed all of the uh incoming materials that we had then i filled it back up with silage from up top and also uh hay now the hay came from across the road here because this morning i also uh, mowed and picked the grass up off of that field and i turned roughly 40,000 liters of that into hay uh, that's what it took to fill up our production so we're in really good shape for TMR. We got basically 170,000 liters on hand and enough to make another 170,000 liters or thereabouts. But as the thumbnail said, um, we have poo problems. So if we take a look at our original pen down here, we have 10 cows in here. Actually, maybe we should go in here and look, make uh, more sense. So we have 10 cows and they are uh, not yet adults. They're still in the heifer stage, although these ones are close to being fully mature. And if we take a look at the manure, we have 17, almost 1,800 liters of manure, and uh, we have almost 1,900 liters of slurry, which is pretty typical. We make a little bit more slurry than manure. Now, I am going to meet you at the top of the hill and let's take a look at that cow pen up there. So I'll catch you up top. Well, before we take a look at our cows or our cow pen more specifically, um, we'll stop here and take a look at our fermenting silo. And we have 366,000 liters of grass in there. And we made uh, 40,000 liters of hay. So that means we got uh, 400,000 liters of grass thereabouts off of that newly expanded grass field and we still have more grass to add because the field on that hillside there below the shop it's ready to be uh, cut as well so on to our poo problem here so if we take a look at our pen um, it says we currently have zero liters of manure in there and it would have been more than two hours ago that I mucked this pen out and if we compare to the other pen, um, we have in here, um, I think it's, yes, 15 mature animals, uh, five heifers, and five calves. So considerably more animals um, than we had down below. And our total manure production in the same time period, 747 liters. Now that includes the 150 liters I took out of the pen this morning. And in the same time, if we look, oh, I guess we've got around here, we have 4,361 liters of slurry. So that means uh, we should have about 4,000 liters of manure, and we've got like less than a quarter of that. Now, this is the same manure heap that we're using down below, and of course we've not changed anything. Um, the only thing that's happened is that that recent Giants update came out. But it doesn't seem to have affected the pen down below. It's working as normal. But interestingly, uh, I'm having some manure issues too on Valley Spring. And this shed is used at one of my farms. There it's a little bit different. Uh, none of the pens, the three cow pens I have on Valley Spring, and I believe all three pens are different. It, they're all keeping the manure now internally none of them are spawning to the manure heaps and that started again kind of after the Giants update but seemed like it was a few days afterwards but 
yeah, you know how those those things go. Sometimes you think it's uh, been longer than it has been. So, anyway, we're just not getting the manure out of here, and this was going to be our main cow pen. So what I'm going to do about that is I'm going to grab ten of the uh, cows, the most mature cows that are furthest away from birth, like. Uh, well, actually, let's just go in and look. I will prop not those ones for sure. Uh, hmm. Probably th that, those five there and those five there. And I'm going to throw them in the pen down below, and that will maximize our manure production down there. Because currently, with the manure we ha are making, we would just be lucky to cover our fertilizer use. Then, if we take a look at our production here, um, so that, that's what we've been using, manure and slurry, to make solid fertilizer. But I can also, in here, make manure from straw and slurry. Well, we're going to have, obviously, an excess of slurry because we don't have any manure to go with the slurry we're getting up here. So I'll put straw with that and turn that into manure and then... Uh, the manure and you know slurry we'll use to make fertilizer so it's um i don't know if there'll be another update or if the mod or the yeah the mod will be updated but uh, that's what we'll do for now anyways but we're not going to make the kind of money we were making off fertilizer uh short story very long <laughs> but that's what we're going to do and uh, once we get enough cattle up here, we'll be making so much slurry. And, of course, we're going to have lots of straw with our barley fields that we have that it won't really be much of an issue. So that's, that's our poo problem. So I think that brings us up to date. Now, this is our barley field that we just planted. And you can see I have weeds in here and it needs fertilizing. So we're going to get on that. Um, I need to mow that field right across the road there um, and get that grass put in our fermenting silo. But uh, and then I, sorry, I should say I need to turn both these fields around. But what we're going to do um, is we're going to put some buildings in. And I normally do this off camera, but I am going to do it on camera for a change because I just thought it'd be something a little bit different. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. So we're going to put our potato production in and our shed. So I'll get up here. I'll get set up. I'm going to turn the help menu on. I'm going to do a game save. <laughs> oh, something uh, you should always do before putting in, uh, especially on console, before putting any new uh, landscaping in or uh, buildings in. So I'll get that done and uh, I'll bring you back in. And we'll take care of that. And then if there's some time, uh, I have our uh, uh, new doits with the fertilizer spreader. Oh, I can't see it. It's just over the brow of that hill. We'll do some fertilizing if there's still time in the episode. Um, we'll see how this uh, building placing slash landscaping goes. Uh, like I said, it looks reasonably flat, so it shouldn't be too bad. So I'll get kind of organized, and I'll see it in just a minute. Okay, I'm all set. So what I've done is turned the help menu on in case we need that. And I turned the interactive zone markers on so we know where we need to access for the building. But most importantly, I've done a game save. So if all uh, if everything goes horribly wrong, we can come back to here and start over. Now, when I'm looking at putting a building in, there's kind of two methods or two ways I'll start. Now, if we take a look at this land here, this uh, area you can see that we've from the road we've got a, a kind of a swale down in here and then it runs uphill there basically to the north so if I wanted to put a building in here um, I would take and use the landscaping tool and mostly the leveling function first and I'd pick the spot I wanted to level to now if I didn't need access to that end of the building I might decide well I'm going to pick this as my level and I'd level out and let it kind of bury itself into the hillside as we went up here. Um, if I needed access all around the building, I'd more likely pick a level spot, uh, reference spot up here on the top, and build a plateau out and then ramp down to give access all the way around the building. 
Where we're going to build down here, though, I don't think we need to do that. We'll use our other method. When it's pretty flat like it is down here, I'll often just try and place the building first. I do make a judgment call, though, when I first kind of put the building in the area at the dollar value of the landscaping. If it is too large, I will go ahead and try to level things off myself. But I find, you know, pretty often here on console anyways, when I flatten and level out a spot, it still seems to want to do some of its own leveling, and I, it feels like I pay more anyways. So I usually just start like this. We'll go and grab the building. Under construction. It's a production building we're looking for. And down here a little ways. Uh, no, that's a dairy. There it is. There's our soup factory. So we get it swung around here. Um, actually, we'll turn snapping on because we will line it up with the... Try to line it up with the edge of the, the field there. Now, it's too bad we couldn't zoom out a little bit more, but it is what it is. Now... Wow, that's a fair bit. The base cost of the building is 135 so we're looking at uh, like over $2,000 worth of landscaping. I actually surprised us that much. Uh, where are our triggers? Hmm. Shouldn't there be... There should be one more trigger for where the pellets spawn. Hmm. I don't know where that is. Well, that'll be a bit of a surprise. But I do want to leave room uh, here... Uh, on this side, the direction I'm going, so we can bring vehicles up. And I want to make sure there's lots of room. Of course, there is tons of room between here and this field. So we don't need to have it that close to the road. So we can put it back here a little bit. Um, doesn't seem like there's one spot that's a whole lot better than another. So uh, maybe a little bit closer to the road. We'll try right there. So there it's in. So what has it done? It's looked like it's lowered a little bit here on this side. Oh, look. There's our zone marker for our pallets. It was just buried in the ground. And raised over here. Now, we come to the moment of truth. Some buildings uh, let you landscape like pretty near right up to them. And others won't let you do it at all. So let's find out what we're up to for here. Oh, of course, I'm standing right in the way, as I often do. So let me move out of the way. Let's see if it's going to let us smooth that out. Oh, it is. Nice. So this is actually pretty easy. Lots of times, it won't let you do this. It, you know, it won't give you access. Matter of fact, it looks like it's going almost right up to the building it's smoothing. Nice. Well, this is pretty easy. Now. It's hard to judge from there, you know, how smooth it is actually. Well, that's not bad. Uh, certainly uh, something we can drive over. That actually was pretty darn easy, I must say. It's uh, not often the case. Now, if it wouldn't have let me landscape this, uh, I got a couple options. I could go back to the start and try and flatten the area out myself. But what I'll often do is I'll actually delete the building. That's why I noted where the money was at. And I will then clean up the landscaping so I'm happy uh, making sure. This one's pretty nice because it had this nice, you know, defined edge on it. I'd make sure that I didn't, you know, interfere with that so that area stayed nice and flat. And I just fix up around it. And then I place the building back, put in government subsidy signs and take the money back to where I was, if that makes sense. Another thing I'll do sometimes if it, I'm having trouble getting in and getting a flat spot is if I want a small building, I'll put a big building like this in, again, get rid of it, 
landscape the area around it and then put the building the smaller building in place of it so an example would be if uh if we were trying to that, put in that small shed for example i put a, a whoops a big building like this in then smooth around the edges and then put this one in kind of the middle if, if this building wasn't letting me landscape around it um, but I, I don't usually use these buildings here to do that with i'll go into decorations if we go up come on up up and into others and there's lots of different buildings in here you can use with different footprints to kind of level it out so that's another uh, trick i'll use because those decoration buildings are a lot less money <clears throat> so i'll put one in with a bigger footprint then level around it and put it in but that was pretty easy i must say nice so there's our soup factory uh let's hope things go as well <laughs> actually you know what we are going to do another save <laughs> Because that did go well. So let's just save the game there. Because <clears throat> I also want to put a shed up here to put our uh, machinery in. So let's go in here again. And oops, look at sheds. And I want... Um, I was thinking of this one. I was thinking of just an open shed. Because it's going to be... I'm not planning on putting any powered equipment in here. See, now we did we put that in with snapping, we can snap that one. And uh, so it just wants to be undercover so it doesn't get the uh, snow on it. Um, and I think I'll put it down here, right close. Uh, we need to be able to get around there. Uh, you know what, I think we'll line it up pretty close to that corner with that corner. Make sure we got enough room there to drive around to any of our vehicles, we should be fine. Hmm, it's saying we don't need to do any landscaping. All right, well, let's put it in and see. See what happens. Well, it sure looks like it did some. It just didn't charge us for it. So just raise that up there a little bit. But you know what? I think we can, let's see now how close this building will let us landscape zoom in here a little bit for this uh we have to see a little oh yeah i think we can live with that now i believe that we could have colored this building but i left it the same uh same color as our buildings up top so it kind of matches Wow, I must say I'm very impressed. That went, uh, that was one of the easiest uh, building placements I've ever done. I have to say, I mean, it went really well. I didn't uh, didn't have to back out and make any extra attempts. So, wow, nice. So now let's do a little painting. Oh, of course, let's get my. I always seem to stand right where I want to work. Always happens. Um, let's see. That's some type of asphalt. Is it that one? No. That one? That looks like it's it. So we're just going to get rid of all this grass in this area. Now we don't need any access behind that building. So just kind of do that. All in front. We'll have it nicely asphalted. We don't need anything over there. And I don't think we'll go right to the road. What we'll do is we'll make an approach. Um, okay, so we'll go across here. Something like that. And... Well, we start. Uh, 
Now, depending on the look I'm going for, um, I might leave grass in the middle of the road or something like that. But in this case, this is new construction, so it's going to be... Hopefully the guys who hired are, are not going to leave grass in the middle of our road. I'll just widen this up because we're going to be coming from all directions here. There's an in, and maybe we'll make a, oops, and out right about here, maybe something like that, out to our road. Now I had a a buddy on here. He actually, what he would do is he'd use the building a little bit before he put his roads in. He kind of follow his tracks because sometimes where you put the roads where you think they make sense when you're doing it like this. You find out that mm, you actually don't use that area and you're in someplace else so he'll actually use a little a little bit a couple times and decide after that where uh, to put his roads oh you know we need to open this up for because we're we'll coming from both directions so let's do it like that yeah well there we go that was that was easy peasy i might need to widen that one a little bit but there we go so i am going to bring down uh, all our root uh, crop equipment is going to be in our harvesters and and that sort of thing it all just sitting here and uh, all our powered equipment will stay up at the big shop and if we need to, we can throw other things in here because that's a pretty big building. I would think we can put uh, uh, our two harvesters, like in each, two harvesters in this bay, two harvesters in this bay, and then stuff in front of them and still have all of this side open for other equipment. I don't know if there's any lights in this one. Uh, I don't think so. So we might want to put some lights in there so if we're working after dark, but there we go. How <laughs> it actually oh look we got a bit of a see if we can got a little bit of a whoop de doo there right there clean that up a little bit yeah and if we as we use it we might find there are little areas we need to kind of clean up we can do that but there we go. Well, that was uh, <laughs> pretty uneventful, which is pretty unusual. I should go buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> uh, we probably want to put some lighting down here, like I just said earlier, at some point. But uh, we can do that after. So I am going to go and do another game save. And I will check the time because I have no idea where we're at. And I'll either come back and wrap things up or we'll come back and do a little fertilizing. So... <laughs> One way or another, I'll see you in a couple minutes. Well, we have a little bit of time left. Not a lot, but enough to do some fertilizing. But first of all, let's take a look at our crops. So these are our carrots here. Yeah, actually, I have to say, they do kind of look like carrot tops. Um, these are our parsnips. Which do have a very similar top to a carrot. And then our beets which do look quite different. Nice. Now these fields, because we've got to plow every time, we'll never have weeds in them. So uh, that's going to hurt our environmental score as far as the weeds go. And because we need to plow, it's going to hurt our tillage score. So um, these uh, vegetable fields are, are going to uh, impact our uh, environmental score negatively a little bit now we could get around the uh, the oh you know what I forgot to do I got to turn my crop sensors on so let's do that we could uh, trick out the weeds by uh, getting a sprayer and uh, just running a spot spray sprayer over it and it'll give you credit but I'm just not going to bother because I don't uh, I'm not too concerned about our environmental score on here to be honest 
we'll just make it as uh, as good as we can, and we'll leave it at that. But I have shown before in other series, if you take it and now if we were going to rent a spot sprayer, even though there's no weeds in the field, and we go and turn it on, just the act of turning it on the field gives you credit for the, the weeding. But there's uh, nothing we can do about the tillage on these that I'm aware of, so. And I think... Um, I think it's going to take the average of the entire plot and we can do everything on the uh, barley field so um, that'll bring the average up they aren't taking a fair bit of fertilizer though Never gets fully light here in the in the fall. Well, actually, it'd be winter because we're in December. Does that mean the lighting on this map is is quite good? Well, there's our veggies done. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna, we're probably going to run out of fertilizer. We're going to have to go and top up before we get our barley done. I'm thinking. Now I think what I'm going to do with the soup factory is I'm just going to put all of our products on selling. I'm not going to deal with uh, carting those um, products up to the shop. Uh, we'll take, I think it's a 20% hit, but I think it's worth it to not have to, because there's, um, I'm, there's going to be a fair number of pallets there to deal with. So I'd just rather not. Oops, I got a little too far away. I'm going to have to go back and touch that edge up. But I am definitely going to run out of fertilizer. Now this little area I just turned around in, I think we're just going to leave that alone. And we'll use that for any future expansion if at some point we do decide to Put in another type of production or need another shed if we do need to store some powered equipment down here we could put in another uh, enclosed shed or something like that so i think we'll just leave it might mow it uh, get the grass off it but might not bother just <laughs> see how i i feel at the time but i have no plans of uh, doing anything with it at this point See if we can make one more trip across here, and then we'll have to go fill up. Well, I hope you found that episode. I just wanted to do something a little bit different, um, and I didn't have a lot of different things to do. So I thought rather than doing that all off camera, I'd do it on camera. I thought it would be a little trickier than that, but it turned out not to be. So I don't know if that's... <laughs> That's a good, it's a good thing because it's not aggravating is a bad thing because it really wasn't all that exciting. <laughs> but believe me, it doesn't, uh, doesn't often go like that.
So I still got a fair bit of work to do, and the day's just about half gone. I think I'll be working into the dark again, because I've got that field to mow. Um, and, oh, I'm driving on the wrong side of the road. That's very handy. Um, got our barley field to fertilize and weed. And then the grass fields I need to turn around. So, got a fair bit to do. Now, I've got 10,000 liters of fertilizer up in our silo. And so, I'm going to sell whatever is left in there. Um, I'll put it on selling just after we're done done here. We might as well just cut across our grass field. Um, because we certainly have plenty of fertilizer now for what we need. These grass fields won't take, take that much. It'll be interesting to see off of our fields, uh, I, we should have a pile of potatoes, I would think, off that big field, but how long the production will run on those other uh, vegetable products. And of course, it'll also depend on uh, <clears throat> how long they take to harvest, because if, if they have capacity for more, uh, I could put more fields in, but if... Uh, it's going to take uh, donkey years to get them harvested. <laughs> I probably won't. So it'll be interesting to see. I said I've only harvested a couple small fields ever. So uh, I really don't know how long it's going to take to do those. But I suppose, I don't know, is, is, I imagine there is a worker in the number limit, or a limit to the number of workers you can have on console. I don't know what it is. But, you know, if it's taken a long, long time, a guy could always have four workers going with four harvesters if you've got the money. So two on uh, each field. That's something we could do too, I suppose. But Because unfortunately, the... The big harvester, the self-propelled ones, way more than 200 horsepower, from what I recall, and it's crazy expensive, like 650,000. So I think we could, we could buy six of the harvesters we're going to use for that. <laughs> well, there. I think that's pretty much rounds out the episode. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, tried to do something a little bit different. I will carry on, get the grass work done and the rest of our field work done and uh, bring in next month. And we'll, we'll start there anyways, but I got a feeling we'll be jumping a few months now till we get some harvesting or something done. But for this episode, I'll leave you there. Um, really appreciate, appreciate you watching. Uh, if you haven't already, I encourage you to hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to know when other content like this lands, you can hit that old notification bell. But for this episode, it's Farmer Murphy signing off from Comlands. <laughs>